chasing Wigston earlier on. Now, it was just a case of getting the power down too early at the run out of turn five here. Yeah, it wasn't a pleasant one. He got the right-hand wheel over top of that curb, and that's a dangerous thing to do. He already knew that. Ooh. All the drivers know that. It caught him out, and I can tell you, it turned itself into a hatchback. The leaf springs in that machine had actually folded themselves up into a curve into the back of that car. It was damaged a lot worse than what we initially thought. And it's simply not a case of buffing that out. That's going to take a long time. It probably shortened it by at least six inches Yeah, and at it, the back. Look, it's always interesting when you say leaf springs in a race car. Yeah, the leaf springs cause the problem. <laughs> well, that's what they are. They've got rules. They can't just turn them into a space frame ch chassis and bolt a cabin around it and call it a central muscle car. There are rules within the category that they must maintain, and when that comes to componentry, what they are and are, aren't allowed to change. And there are two classes as well within the central muscle cars. Class 1, Class 2, fairly obviously, the faster and the slightly slower. And they're designated by a blue dash on the windscreen, or a red dash on the windscreen. It really is a fairly simple sport. On paper, anyway. <laughs> As they line up at the back, there is Wigston looking to take his position a long way back. Look at Dr. John Elliott's car. It looks so small from the back of the field here. So 28 cars starting the final race of the weekend. The NZ Central Muscle Cars, part of the ITM 500 Auckland. And he does get bullied, Dr. John. He oh, really yeah. does. He's a six cylinder. It's almost genuine. It's a beautiful machine. And it's lovely to watch go around the track. And he does have quite the following of New Zealand fans who always come up there, take photos and look at it. But he will get to launch away, as he does every single time. He smokes the tyres up a little bit and gets the little lightweight machine barreling down there. And New Zealanders and Australians know that car style so well. That was a handy start for him, too. He must have known it was coming like that. He'll lead us down. Now the second group lead the line, so it's a handicapped start. This to promote a real exciting finish as our next group of cars take off with their little VK Commodore back in second position. Way yeah. go the next group of cars in the line. Now we start to get some of the heavy hitters. Yeah, exactly. And this is such a horsepower track. It requires a lot of torque, a lot of power to really utilize all the aspects of the circuit. When you slow yourself down, you want to get up as quickly as you can. So the high horsepower machines absolutely adore it. And so do the fans, so do the drivers. It's 2.9k circuit, 2.6 of fun, 0.3 of pure terror, especially when you're running leaf springs in a muscle car. Here they come, the next group. We just saw Andy Turner leaving the start line in the HDT replica that won the race yesterday. There's Dalton coming through the field now as well. It's a last, wild ride. The last group of cars are on their way, and the chase begins. So the leaders should be coming down towards the hairpin now as the fast guys are leaving pit straight now. Eight laps, two done by the front runners. So theoretically, if they've got all of their timing, and there it was, all their timing right on the start finish line, we can tell you, oh, that's not good for Paul Kelly. So the 90, who was in the fence, you can see with the patchwork on the front left of that car, has yeah. gone off perhaps in turn five. And it wasn't a good sight to see some black smoke come in, out of it as well. So small issue for him, meanwhile, Yes, eight lap race, handicap start, slow at the front, fast at the back. Can they catch them? Once they catch them, can they feed their way through and pass them? Oh, here's Dalton coming through already. I just got really nervous when I saw all those cars because we had them at least four wide on the main straight here yesterday towards the closing stages of the race. It was a bit polluted by the safety car at the end there. The idea is to try and run this without safety cars. By the time it gets to the end, the likes of Winston and Perkins should be up there. We call it a gentleman's category, just like you do in TCM. Uh, however, sometimes that by accident goes out the window. But generally, yeah, they are fairly good because they don't like to damage the wonderful machines that they drive around it. So we'll try and tell you how far they are closing up, the closing up times of those who started down the back. That would be Andy Knight, Perkins, Hopkins, uh, the likes of Winston, who all did so well in the early stages of the weekend. Now it's their job to catch guys like this. And there are so many of them. And it's a lot of muscle to try and catch, isn't it? Oh, man. It's insane the amount of quality we've got out here today. Really love the US Army Chevy Camaro out there of Davey Hopper. His dad, Ken Hopper, very well known over here for his chassis constructions as well. There goes a horsepower run. We just like to admire it as they go down the front straight into the bouncy, bumpy turn one of Pukakoi. And to be fair, some of these muscle cars are actually handling it better. There's oh. a spin. And 
there's smoke coming out of the back of another machine. I thought it was Andy Knight's Monza, but it's not. It's the XE Fountain, I think. Yeah, a little bit of smoke. We don't want to see that. I was saying in turn one, they actually seem to be going around better than some of the Super Tourers. And yeah, these cars were. Yeah. It was Bruce McRae that went around down at the exit of the hairpin. So now Hopper, all over the back of the 27 of Tristan Tecky, now the Chevy Camaro. And then group the class two, defined by the blue banner across the windscreen. So this is a pretty handy job for him. Here's a replay of what happened down here at the real sharp banked hairpin. Came into the corner very, very slow. Oh, he just got a touch. Okay, just a touch, put him on the ripple strip, lost his traction, one tyre on the bumps, one tyre on the grass. What can you do? Everybody taking evasive action down there. He actually put his hand out the window, I think, to apologise. It's like, as though he was going to say, yeah, all right. My fault. Yeah, my fault. Never. <laughs> Can't be a race car driver. No, absolutely not. So Bowden is the leader at the moment ahead of Elliott. Then it's Holden out there in the 18 machine. It's in third position. And Grant Dalton getting another run through. Of course, uh, most New Zealanders will know the name Grant Dalton. Maybe not so much back in Australia, but Grant Dalton leads there's Shane Wicks, look at him go, it's an absolute got in front of Andy Knight, Grant Dalton heads the Team New Zealand America's Cup Yachting Syndicate so, uh, and also a Whitbread round the world racer, very famous for his yachting exploits but he absolutely adores motorsport and he's had his machine for a long time and he, he just anonymously comes out and plays at the racetracks and people don't realise he's there, we're trying to watch a replay now, oh that oh, was Paul Kelly, Kelly, so that is a yeah, that's a small issue issue being damaged. There's Dr. John, the famous Dr. John that we mentioned so many times. And this beautiful Tirana. I wonder if he's thinking about hanging up the helmet still after the weekend he's had. No. No, he'll, he'll dine on this though. Oh, absolutely. Oh, barbecues and restaurant dinners for years to come. He'll talk about how he was leading the way V8 supercars, right here, 500, and he'll say 2015, and he'll just go into a nice little story about it. It was a great year. It was it's a that great voice year. Yeah. As he drops another red wine into the glass. Exactly. I've got to say, he's doing a very handy job here right now. Running third at the moment, he knows the fast cars are coming. In fact, they're still down outside the 20 at the moment. He might hang on here. Well, he could have some beautiful glory ahead of him, and he is a gentle giant. Everyone wonders in fact how he even shoehorns himself in to the little Torana because he is a big big man. Shoehorn, great description. Here's Davy Hopper coming through and that beautiful Valiant Charger behind him as well. And now the big cars coming through. There's Dean Perkins in the Red Falcon and Shane Wigston in the 73 Auto Aero sponsored HQ Holden. Yeah, he's not getting the run that he wants. He's trying to go down the inside and put the power through. But by rights, he's been blocked off by someone that wants that line. They can take it. They just can't move back. We all know the rules of motorsport. Just some people don't tend to adhere to them all the no. time. Many drivers' briefings are held, but ask a driver how much they remember. I wasn't there. Sorry, I wasn't told about that no <laughs> moving across the racetrack stuff. How long has that been a no action? Well, Steve Neuer's been given a touch-up by Kamara that's not looking healthy. Not at all. 23 entry down there at Dean Owens, and there's fire coming out the back of it now. Yeah. So it's going to be dropping oil somewhere too. It's not a pleasant sight. And he's going right into the fastest point of the course here. Everyone behind him getting really nervous. What might happen now? So there's Perkins and the Red Falcon coming through. Winston, these guys... Well, they're rivals, aren't they? It's fair to say, but healthy rivals. Yeah, healthy rivals. And it's, it's midfield stuff at the moment because leaving, leading the way is Bowden, Holden, Mason, Dreden, then Dr. John Elliott in fifth. And that is not pleasant either. Look, there's been a little bit more carnage than we really expected in the race so far today. That's the Bruce Anderson's car there back this, there too. Yeah, the uh, E-frame Pine Pack machine. And he has had a drama-filled weekend. He got taken out yesterday. There's the Chevy Monza. How's the throaty sound of that Chevy Monza down to turn five? Anderson, of course, partnered up with Dick Johnson in several NZ endurance races back in the 80s. Word is that yesterday, or even Friday during practice, Bruce Anderson was telling Dick that he had a few problems getting the power down and trying to control this car, maybe a setup. And DJ just looked at him and said, it's probably your right foot. <laughs> As Dick Johnson would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> old mates get old school advice. Exactly. 
Wigston, meantime, sliding his way around. He's trying to get through the field. It's up to 18th now, but time is running out with two remaining. You can imagine the feathering that he must have to do on the throttle of that machine to keep the NASCAR engine under control. Because we all know that car was not designed to have that kind of power. No way. Yeah, so he does a fantastic job to keep it on the circuit and makes it entertaining racing. And there you can see it, just the pure horsepower. 850 horsepower, Ralph Gates power plant. Oh, smoke ahead. Is that a tyre? It's let go there. It's... Saw some debris blown up into the air ahead of us. If it wasn't, it's going to be soon. That was enormous. No sight of it, but you're right. There was debris in the air. There was smoke in the air. But yet we can't see any trailing damage. Perkins down the inside of Dalton. We left him enough room, only just, and the big Falcon gets on through as we start the final lap. Yeah, so that... Bowden's still your leader ahead of Holden, and Mason now up to top, the top three position. Nice, Dr. John Elliott getting swamped, as we expect a little six-cylinder to do. But let's go back onto turns five, six, and seven and try and find where all of that smoke came from. Oh, it was a pure lock-up, but he locked it up so much he might have thrown some rubber off his own tyre. And it's Grant Dalton. Definitely a chunk went in the air, yeah, wasn't Trying it? to go past Perkins. Well, that's commitment. Big commitment. Here's How? the mark. Look at the marks on the ground here from it. Oh, has he lifted tarmac? Because it's right on the yeah. rub where they, they, they fix little bits of the circuit. So you do have to wonder what has happened there. And apparently they do that in yacht racing. They can go down the inside in yachts quite easily. Not so much in Camaros. So it is Bowden, Holden, Mason, Dreard of Holland, Turner, Van Sweat, Hopper, Galbraith, and Perkins. So Perkins is now into the top ten. Coming up to the final corner, and Bowden, a second advantage here. Puffer Spoke from the 63. Chevy Camaro for placemakers. Through the final turn, he'll drift it out and will take the win in front of this enormous crowd here today. His right front tyre is not looking pretty at all. So he managed, he might have done himself some damage, but he got the win. Look at Bruce Anderson. He's just been smashed around the whole weekend. On the E-frame entry, the vision would have been restricted for most of that race. He's going to come back inside the top ten here. So Bowden wins it from Mason, Dreden and Holland. Andy Turner got up to fifth position once again. Solid drive from the five Commodore. Yeah, very nice, Van Sweat, Galbraith, Hopper, Perkins, ninth. So he managed to get the move. Grant Dalton, Wigston got all the way to 11th spot. That is a massive drive. Absolutely. Bowden from Mason, seven tenths in the end. Dreden in third, Holland fourth, then Turner, Rick Van Sweat in sixth, Tony Galbraith in seventh, David Hopper got to eighth, and Dean Perkins inside the ten, and Grant Dalton. And there's the confirmation. Shane Wigston up to 11th from last. Tony Barrage John Mills. Skulls, Bruce Anderson, well, he stayed 15th with all that drama. Ahead of Clark Hopkins, Tristan Teke, Bruce gets Steve Neuer. At the page to Bruce McRae, Paul Kelly, who had a couple of spins, Sean Fowler, Greg Holden, Andy Knight down at Dennis Goble, Dean Owens and John Mitchley.